Welcome to a new episode of Video Car Review, our international branch of Ausfa TV, and I'm Mr. Yeezy, your host today. Uh, for those of you who don't know our format yet, it's a little bit longer than everything else you might know, but look in the description text of the video, there you find jump markers and you can jump from section to section. Besides that, our reviews are always structured the same way, so you have the same chapters all the time, so you can compare car chapter-wise which is pretty neat, I guess. And if it's too long, you can just watch two chapters today and two chapters tomorrow and so on. Besides that, in the description text, you find the technical specs of our test car, the C300 convertible as well, and links to reviews of the competitors. Well, back in 2014, Mercedes already introduced the sedan and the Estate version of the 205, the new C-Class. A year later, they introduced the Coupe version, and uh, we have an English review about the Coupe as well in our stream. In Geneva at the Auto Show in 2016, they introduced uh, the convertible version, and now we have five versions of the new C-Class. We have the sedan, the long version of the Sedan for the um, Chinese market only. We have the convertible, the coupe and the estate version and I'm wondering if there will be something like the G uh, CLS or CLA for the uh, C-Class as well. Some say this will come sooner or later as well. I'm quite excited about the new Mercedes-Benz C-Class convertible because I'm a Mercedes-Benz fanboy and it is the first uh, convertible in the segment by Mercedes-Benz. They uh, didn't deliver cars for the segment yet and we do have competitors of course. Um, for instance the BMW 4 Series convertible as well as the Audi A5 convertible. Uh, besides that, at least in Europe we know the Opel Cascada as well. It's not premium but still the same segment and uh, in case you're interested the C-Class convertible is built in Bremen in Germany as well, uh, like the T-Model or the, the E-State version. And um, it will be available for uh, ordering in June 2016 and we expect the first cars to be delivered in September 2016. Mercedes-Benz is introducing the new C-Class convertible with two diesel, five petrol and three petrol AMG powertrains. So let's start with the diesels. That's the AMG version here right there. The uh, smallest diesel is a C220D that comes with a 2.2 liter four-cylinder diesel and 170 horses. As an option you get the 4Matic all-wheel drive by Mercedes. Then we got the C250D that comes with 204 horses. With the petrol engines, we start out with a C180, a 1.6 liter four cylinder with 156 horses. Then we got the C200, uh, a two liter four cylinder with 184 horses. As an option, you get the four wheel drive as well as the Formatic four wheel drive in Mercedes. Uh, going on with a C250 that comes with 211 horses. The C300 comes with uh, 245 horses and the C400 comes by factory settings with a 4 Matic all-wheel drive and has 333 horses. That is the 3 liter V6. Well, behind me you see the AMG version starting out with a Mercedes AMG C43 with a V6 and 367 horses. This is a Mercedes AMG C63 with a V8 and 467 horses and the top engine is the Mercedes-Benz C63 S that comes with a V8 and 510 horses. All the convertibles of the C-Class come with a 9G Tronic automatic transmission at least as an option. The two smaller, so the smallest engine, the smallest diesel and the smallest petrol engine has by, have by factory setting a manual 6-speed but as an option the 9G Tronic and of course the C63 comes with a 7G Tronic PowerShift AMG Blah 
automatic transmission. And here is the heart of our test car. I chose the C300 with a 2 liter 4 cylinder that comes with 245 forces. It's good for maximum torque of 370 newton meters and you get them in a range between 1300 and 4000 rpm. Our car comes with rear-wheel drive, like all the C-Class models, except the four Medic versions. And um, by factory setting, with the C300, you get the 9G Tronic Z automatic transmission by Mercedes-Benz. Allow me to give you the basic specs of our test car, the Mercedes-Benz C300 convertible. It accelerates from 0 to 100 km per hour or 62 miles per hour in 6.4 seconds. And the top speed is reached at 250 km per hour or 155 miles per hour. The gas tank of the 2060 Mercedes-Benz C300 convertible will take 66 liters or 17.5 US gallons. Mercedes-Benz gives a fuel consumption figure of 7.1 liters for every 100 kilometers driven or 33.1 miles per US gallon. Which means that under perfect conditions you can drive up to 920 kilometers or 570 miles without stopping for fuel. CO2 emissions for the 2060 Mercedes-Benz C300 convertible should be 161 grams per kilometer according to Mercedes-Benz. The Mercedes-Benz convertible has a length of 4.69 meters or 185 inches with a wheelbase of 2.84 meters or 112 inches. It is 1.41 meters high, so 56 inches, and it is 1.81 meters wide, so 71 inches, with a span of 2 0.02 meters or 80 inches from mirror tip to mirror tip. For the turning circle you need at least 11.2 meters or 36.7 feet of free space. The curb weight comes in at 1690 kilograms or 3726 pounds. The map maximum loaded weight is 2170 kilograms or 4784 pounds. In Germany our our test car would cost around about 75,000 euros. Well, if you look at the front, you can hardly tell is this a coupe version or the convertible, unless you look at the roof or you be on the autobahn and the roof is a little bit bouncing. However, just like the coupe, Mercedes-Benz is offering the convertible with two different trim levels. Uh, so we got avant-garde and exclusive, while our test car is equipped with the avant-garde trim level. And as an option, you can choose the AMG line trim as well as an option. And uh, we got the AMG trim on our car. You recognize it by a different uh, front bumper as well as a diamond grille in the front that is part of the uh, basic setting of this trim level. By factory setting, the Mercedes-Benz C-Class comes with H7 halogen headlights. But our test car is equipped with the best light you can get from Mercedes-Benz in the C-Class, the LED intelligent light system with all the options you want, like cornering lights, like, you know, you name it, you got it, everything in here. Well, I showed you this one, the C300, and I chose it for my review because I've driven the C63S already as the, um, <laughs> as the sedan version. But still, since I can put two, uh, both of the cars together in one picture, I would like to point out some of the differences. So the fenders or the... Um, The wheel archers stand out much more here with the AMG model and of course we have the uh, twin blade grill with the AMG badge on the side and a complete different front bumper with the famous or infamous AMG A-Wing design. The color of our test car, you might say it's a white, you know, it's a diamond white, but it's not. It's a special color, costs a little bit extra as well, it's called Designo diamond white bright it has a little bit different appeal and I like it it's a creamy white it's one of 12 colors you can choose from and concerning the soft top you have the option between a dark brown a dark red a dark blue and a dark black 
Well, all right. Uh, our test car should stand on 18 inch alloys. Well, the regular C class convertible stands on 17 inch. Uh, but since we got the AMG uh, line here, it should stand on 18 inch. But as you can see, it's also bigger. We got 19 inch on here. I don't know why. It's probably a matter of taste. Uh, I would have loved to see the regular. Um, alloys here. But talking about the AMG line, um, part of the AMG line is this alloy look um, line that goes around um, the whole car actually on the side as well. We have different side skirts with the AMG line and um, oh, not uh, just depending on the AMG line. The whole car is lowered, just like the coupe version. In comparison to the sedan or the e-state version, the coupe as well as the convertible are lowered. They have less ground clearance, 15 millimeters less. Since I stand here, just jumped in to show you how the roof is opening. So, windows are lowered. I have my iPhone as a stopwatch and I will start right now. By the way, in case you care, when the roof is opening at the highest point, you need a height of at least 197 centimeters. So in case you want to open the roof in a garage, you got to know uh, how much space you need. And it's even less than 20 seconds between after 16 seconds, it's already done, but to uh, raise the windows up, it takes another four seconds. One function I would like to introduce to you is the air cap function. I think it's an option, third button here. Once I press it, a little spoiler comes out here <coughs> and between the headrest of the back seats, I have a windbreaker as well. So both options help to reduce the turbulences, the windy turbulences inside the car. As an option, you can uh, get a manual windbreaker as well that is installed be uh, behind the two front seats. So I'm quite amazed. By the way, I will just close it again as well stopping. Um, you can open and close the roof while driving if you want to, but you be, have to be aware you are not allowed to drive faster than 50 kilometers per hour, otherwise it won't work. And here again, 20 seconds to close everything, even the windows, but I really like to have the windows open. By the way, with the coupe, when I reviewed the coupe version, I was, well, disappointed is the right word. I guess. It's disappointed that the rear windows would not lower themselves. They were fixed, fixed windows in the rear. And I said, well, you know, if you have a real cool coupe, you want to have this shape. So with a convertible, you can lower the windows, of course. And that makes me wonder even more why did they didn't invest you know, wh why can't you lower the windows with a coupe? That's really disappointing, at least. W what do you think? Well, from the angle, it's hard to see maybe, but still I want to give it to you as a side view comparison. Uh, this uh, C63 S uh, version stands on 20 inch alloys. We have a different braking system, of course. We got different side skirts here and uh, on the front, um, we got the V8 badge, of course, and that's pretty much it. I just told you we have the AMG line and this silver application is part of the AMG line as well as the uh, silver lookalike diffuser down at the bottom of the car. Uh, inside this uh, application, you find the third braking light, LED technology, same for the rear light, full LED rear lights. But, you know, I just reviewed, or. Oh, feels like I just revved it to new E-Class and you know the stardust in the rear lights uh, from the new E-Class. I was expecting it in here as well, but it doesn't come with a C-Class. All right, guys, since I have a chance, the two rears on one picture as well, the differences are not too, too, <laughs> too much. The air outlets are a little bit bigger on the AMG version due to the uh, 
bigger uh, fenders here and uh, we have a little carbon spoiler on the top and the button of course is different we have the AMG sport exit system and a real diffuser down here I would have loved to drive the <laughs> C63S of course but since I've driven this one as the sedan version already I decided to take an engine I haven't done so far so I chose the three, C300 well, the sun is really teasing me now and it tells me put down the roof, come on, put it down, put it down. But I want to show you the interior, so let's go inside and I'll leave the roof open. However, I can show you the door and the door is pretty huge because we have not only to jump inside in the front but as well in the rear. Um, of course, as you can see, it's frameless, we're driving a convertible. Standing here to jump inside the car, having the door all the way open, it does not make sense. I, I would never open the door this far because it almost opens 85 degrees, you know. You would actually just do this way. But this way you can easier see how I get inside. And I can tell you it's a little bit down, so I have to move down. But I don't have to really nod my head because I lower myself so much. And now I have to really, really lean out to close the door. But who would open it that wide? On the other hand, the door does not weigh too much, so it's easy to close. And my little assistant is reaching me the belt already. All right, I'm sitting here in the new C300 convertible and I'm not even sure if this is the AMG line inside as well. Um, they didn't give me any information, please, I apologize. However, what I do normally, I check the materials. We have artificial leather here on the dashboard, then a brushed alloy application. And even this is not hard plastic, it's, um, it's rather, you know, soft, even a hard version of soft. Then we get this, you know, real organic wood application in the middle. As far as I know, this was developed in China, you know. The Chinese people like this so much. Uh, they have this trend of going back to nature, sort of, and want to have it in the car. So we got it here as well. I like it. I think it's much more impressive than just this high glossy paint. But maybe I'm just overdone with high glossy paint. So, quite nice. I'm not sure, I think rather artificial leather. We got leather seats um, in the door panels, artificial leather on the top, real leather in the center. And, you know, even same like here, you know, on the um, compartments in the door panels, it's a rather soft touch and a leather steering wheel, of course. So, quite nice. Uh, hard plastic here and maybe here. Not, not even here, that's not really hard plastic, just here. But uh, that's okay, I guess. All right, um, space. I mean, um, I really like the center of the C-Class because it's uh, getting wider to the front and it gives you the feeling like, you know, you see this massive block and you think you have this massive space between the seats as well. I kind of like it, you know. But I have plenty of space. My seat is not even lower to the very lowest position and I can still put a fist between my head and the ceiling, the uh, soft top here. So that's quite nice. I have no problem sitting here at all, so I have plenty of space. Talking about ergonomy, uh, Mercedes marketing department is naming this the free floating display. I know you guys out there are like, oh, we don't like it, you know, it doesn't look good. I don't buy, I don't mind, you know, it doesn't bother me too much. What I kind of dislike is that you cannot flip it to the driver. That would be an awesome feature, you know. Just put it in my direction so it's driver oriented. However, the whole center console is uh, rather, uh, yeah, it's in the center, it's middle, so the display is facing the rear, sort of. Besides that, once you've driven one Mercedes, you get along with a new C-Class as well. One button row for the um, air condition, one for the infotainment system, the whole block here for the infotainment system, some buttons on the steering wheel and the assist systems on the side here on the left to the steering wheel. Um, yeah, but quite nice. Let me think again. 
I got distracted because the uh, C63S just uh, rolled down here and I didn't know that uh, I would see uh, would see some of the guys uh, here. However, um, space, economy, material, I got everything, everything. I covered everything. So, starting with a normal routine, we cannot adjust the, uh, the height of the safety belts on my shoulder, but if I get inside the car, I have a little assist system that is reaching me the belt, which I really appreciate because it's much easier to uh, turn around and grab the belt yourself. And that's the length of the safety belt here. I cannot tell you much about the seats because all I've done so far was running around the car. I, I did not even drive one meter with a well. 10 meters to rearrange that here, but um, cannot tell you much about comfort or side support of the seats. However, um, I can tell you, you can heat the seats up with three intensities um, and you can cool them down as well. So we got both in here and you can like normally uh, with Mercedes-Benz, you can do both at the same time, which I like, you know, turn on the seat heating all the way and just one dot for the air condition so the hot air gets blown to your body, which I think is pretty neat. Uh, one thing um, more, I got one more button, three intensities as well, that's the air scarf. There's a little fan uh, on my neck here, integrated in the seats, and once I activate it, a little bit of warm air is blowing to my neck, so especially if you drive in nighttime and it gets a little chilly, you can activate this baby and uh, prevent yourself from getting a stiff neck. I think that's awesome, really awesome. Besides that, uh, I'm sitting on perforated leather seats. I uh, cannot tell you much more about it because I don't have any options about the car, I'm sorry. Uh, but we do have an electric lumbar support. The button is down here at the bottom of the seat. Besides that, I can adjust the seats all the way electrically. Even the headrest, I can adjust up and down as you can see. The backrest and the whole seat. And I can even extend the seat cushion here. I think even up to 8 centimeters. Kind of funny because I don't see the picture of the GoPro which I'm using to film the interior, but I think you should be able to see the C63S version of the car I'm sitting in there and the guys taking pictures of it. Okay, did I? Oh, and you can store, of course, uh, all the settings of the uh, seats here with three slots. Done. Um, the steering wheel is covered with leather, with perforated leather on the sides where I put my hands. So if you have sweaty hands, that helps you a lot. It's um, an electric, you can adjust it electrically. I will pull it up and then pull it out all the way. I hate those electric things that are always so slow. Now going all the way down and pushing it all the way in. And once again all the way up so you see what options you have. I think it would be fine, should be fine for everyone to find a good suitable position. I think my favorite would be this one. <clears throat> Uh, we got shifting pedals on both sides, of course, and they have this little dance so you can really put your fingers there and easily shift. They f look a little bit like alloy, but then they feel rather like plastic, sadly. It's a multifunctional steering wheel, so on the left side we got buttons to control the board computer and turn off the voice recognition. On the right side we got uh, buttons to control the infotainment system, so we can uh, adjust the volume or mood the system, take phone calls or hang up phone calls and activate the speech command. That's it from the steering wheel so far. Yeah, it's not heated, no. No. The mirrors are fine. They're big enough to see everything, what's going on behind. Um, besides that, the inner mirror, I can't see uh, the whole rear window. 
except that the um, seats in the rear are blocking my side, so the headrest of the rear seats are blocking my side a little bit, but it's it's okay, you know, you see enough, I guess so. And even if you lower the um, lower the roof, it's not in your way because it lowers all the way down. Um, if I turn my head around my shoulder on the left side, everything is fine, no blind spot. On the right side, A uh, pillar is fine, C pillar is not really there, and the C pillar is quite large. I mean, nothing to discuss, there is a blind spot, so make sure you use the right mirror as well to control and check what's going on on the right side. Um, yeah, besides that, we have a 360 degree camera as an option. I will show this later to you when I show you all the cockpit, which I actually do right now. So we start up with launching the engine. So you see all the needles and lights flash up. On the left side, we have a round gauge, uh, the speedometer going up to 260 kilometers per hour. The car runs 250. So they use the speedometer very wisely. Down there we have um, the control for the fuel tank and as you see little LEDs show you how much fuel is still in there. And you know this, uh, what this little arrow next to the petrol thing means? It means that the, uh, the gas tank is on the right side so whenever you want to go to a gas station you know where to park. Okay, the other way around, on the left side we got the rev meter going up to 8000 rpm while the right range starts at 6250 rpm and that's how it looks like if the needle is moving. And down here we got the coolant temperature. In the center of it we have a little board computer, it's split it down here you see the actually uh, the, the current temperature outside and the current time, while on top you see the different driving programs, like now I'm in Eco, Comfort or Sport, and uh, the current driving program I'm in. Now I'm in Park and I can put it in Drive now, and as you see and the steering wheel button is from the assist system and I disabled the start stop stuff. In the center that's what I call the board computer and I can navigate through so that's the current uh, kilometers the car has driven and the current mileage zero because I haven't moved yet. Uh, the reach with a gas tank with a fuel tank an eco um, meter if you drive efficiently that's the board, uh, well, the mileage from the start and your current fuel consumption from the last reset and the digital speed. That's it. Then we got uh, the navigation system, radio station, media, phone, assist uh, graphics. I can put them on if I want to service menu and the settings and if I go in settings I can you know choose assist systems, the head-up display, the light, uh, the whole cockpit, something and so on. It's not too interesting I guess. On the other side you see a black screen I will launch it up so you see the launch process as well. That's the command online. Uh, I've reviewed the new E-Class and I was like wondering if they put the new version of the command online system from the E-Class as well in the C-Class but they didn't. So if you walk through here you see the R, uh, old cards, the old ways to present radio station, uh, media, phone and car. Besides that um, with the car settings, here's a 360 degree camera. So we got this bird view picture here and you see my tripod that I try to hide. <laughs> and uh, that's the rear, no, no, that's the front camera, right? Now I can switch between a 180 degree and a 360 degree view. And if I go up here, I can switch between different uh, views that I can use to, you know, park more secure and safe or do whatever. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I know from the um, Q3 
coupe version as well as from the sedan that you can easily read everything during night and daytime. And I'm back. Well, I would love to present you the ambient light, but I cannot because I have to return the car before it's getting uh, dark. But I can tell you we have three different colors, blue, amber and white. And you see there behind this whole block, there are LEDs as well as down here. And you can illuminate it in uh, three different colors with five different intensities. That is it. And uh, now I'm always checking where's the emergency light, you know, the light indicator. And I expect it normally like here, you know. I'm driving, there's uh, something critical and I want to push something. Here in the C-Class, I have to push it down here. I mean, really. Is it easy to find? No. I, I don't think so. So that's nice from the design aspect, but from the safety or secure aspect, it's really at least I don't think it's pretty good. And last but not least, I will honk the horn for you guys. That's how it sounds like. <coughs> All right, guys, and I'm already back with the video car review compartment check. I run through all the compartments I find here to give you an idea of what's going on. In the door panels we have enough space for half a liter bottle. It's not really a bottle space but you can, you know, push them in there and it's fine. And you still have plenty of space. You could lay it in there as well. So it's not too small. So no compartment seal. The next one is behind this little lid. I can open it. First of all, I have a compartment here and a 12 volt outlet. And then I have two cup holders with spacers even. I can use and I can put this half a liter bottles in. But actually they're too small for this uh, spacer stuff. So they shake around, but I think it's still okay and fine. Um, besides that, if you say, well, I'm not drinking while I'm driving, you can even Pull this out, you release it and then you have another storage compartment. But I will leave this in and close the lid. Uh, to close, uh, open this compartment, here's a push button, both wings open. And here's a little compartment with two USB ports and an SD card reader. And if you want to, you can use this data connection from Mercedes-Benz in here as well. But I don't want to and I won't do it. But what I can do is actually charge my iPhone while I talk with you guys. Because battery is already down on 48%. In the foot compartment on the passenger side we have a, a net. And I know a bunch of guys like this net. And I remember finally reviewing the C-Class Coupe. <laughs> because I was so annoyed by the uh, gloves compartment you know from the design aspect it's pretty neatly done from the pe pr practical aspect it really i don't like it it's hard to get in there to put stuff in there you have a light and that's pretty much it i don't even want to talk about it to be serious we have two sun visors on both sides. Uh, both come with a makeup mirror that is illuminated. I'm still wondering, you know, if I open this lid here from the makeup mirror, it's, you know, keeping the light from illuminating my pretty face. Oh, I need a new shave, I guess. And uh, never mind. Next to this, we have a little clip for holding tickets and so on. Um, in the center, we have reading lights for the driver and the passenger. And if I turn on the whole light or open the car, both lights turn on and uh, the two lights under the mirror as well as an entry light. Then we got a, a, a compartment for the shades. And I'm not wearing shades right now, but I could because I got some here. Uh, those are not really big Ray-Bans and they fit in here. Yeah, they fit in here, but they shouldn't be much bigger than this, I guess. So that's a rather small compartment for your shades. Here we have uh, two new buttons. You can call the Mercedes service or the uh, other service. Well, this is more information service and the other one is more like I need service for my car. And if I push this button, I can activate the rocket launcher. Well, Mercedes calls it SOS button. So in case of an emergency, you click this. And no, no ro lo rockets get launched here. And that is it from my side already. All right, we have 
four single seats, two in the front and two in the rear. I personally don't remember how much space I had in the coupe, so I'm willing to try it out in the convertible as well. Now jumping in the back, it does make sense that the door can open that wide. I have a silver a handle here that I can use to push forward the backrest of the driver's seat as well as the passenger seat on the other side. And the seat goes forward automatically. And all I have to do is crawl in here now and yes, it could be easier, but then it's okay. I pull back the uh, backrest and the seat goes back electrically to its uh, stored position. I'm here. Here. All right, sitting in the rear now is not really fun for me as a grown-up. I'm 180 centimeters tall, so 5'11". The driver's seat is put in a position that I can drive comfortable, and I have problems sitting behind myself in a comfortable way. Uh, because there's a lack of space for my legs, I can hardly put my uh, push my feet under the seat. Well, I always sit pretty low. I have to excuse Mercedes. However, I can choose either having no leg space and a little bit of head space, a tiny bit, or a little bit of leg space and hardly any uh, space for my head. And the sad thing is that right here is this, uh, I don't know how to call it, like, you know, an iron uh, stick from the, from the roof. And if I sit here and we would drive on a bumpy road, I would hit my head always against this uh, iron thing and doesn't feel good, really. Good thing is there's a hard uh, plastic cover on the seat, so even if I push my knees against the seat, I don't bother the driver. From the material, first of all, I always forget, um, I almost forgot. We have uh, two single seats, so no bench, two single seats here, just like in the coupe. And uh, we have the same leather like in the front, on the side, same material, soft touch, real leather, soft touch again. So the material is pretty much the same. Um, however, if I sit here and uh, look to the side, you know, my head looks against this pillar or this roof line. And once again, if I s sit here and we go on a bumpy road, I hurt myself as well. So that's not really fun. But most of the time, I'll probably have the roof open and sit here and just enjoy, enjoy the sun because it's a Mercedes and I like it so much. Right? Right. Okay, but I can say, I guess, that you can sit here as a grown-up, of course, in the rear. But, you know, driving to the next ice cream store, maybe, you know, like, yay, boom, 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 something like that. But you don't want to sit here long distance. But on the other hand, there's not enough uh, luggage storage for, for, for grown-ups, so I think it's okay. All right, compartments. On my side, I have a little compartment, hard plastic. Nothing here. Down here is a little compartment, completely useless, but anti-slip surface. Two air outlets. Done. I'm done. Uh, we have Isofix hooks uh, on both seats. The locks of the safety belts are stiff. And the length of the safety belt is um, quite pleasant to buckle up child seats or baby shelves. So this is all okay. Like it, it's fine. Uh, besides that, I'm not doing this again in the German version. I already checked if we have a protection here from the windows. So if um, the little kid is playing around and daddy is lifting up the windows, the kids cannot get harmed. Good thing, Mercedes. <laughs> All right, it's about time to check out the trunk, but before I do so, I will present you the key. And again, you know, I've, I've presented you the new E-Class with a new Mercedes-Benz key, and I'm like, ooh, as a Mercedes-Benz fanboy, really excited, a new key. And now I drive the new C-Class convertible, and what do I find? The old key. It's the old one. We know it already. It's boring. You know, give me the new one. However, we got um, nothing on the rear, on the front. We got the Mercedes-Benz star, uh, three buttons, unlock, lock, and open the trunk. And we really need this push button open the trunk because big fail, design fail. There's no way to open the trunk on the lid. There is none. It's not me being stupid. It's rather Mercedes being 
Uh, whatever. And uh, so you have a push button in the door to open the trunk or the push button here on the key. And if I hold it, the lid opens. By the way, not electrically, it's just a spring. So I can get my luggage out here. Um, if the roof is closed, you have a storage for 360 liters or 13 cubic feet. And, um, but just if the roof is open, if the roof is closed, you're limited to 285 liters or 10 cubic feet. I show you how you're limited. Uh, but before I do this, or I would do this while looking inside. So this is how the empty trunk looks like. And uh, let's start out here. We have a little net. Let me turn on the light real quick. A little net and the first aid kit. On the other side, we have a little lamp and that's about it. I can lift the floor, I have some more luggage and here a hook, but nothing here. And here we got the rings on each side and in the rear to tie up stuff if you want to. But besides that, as you can see, there's nothing really here. Nothing exciting to see. Did I show you the lamp already? Yeah, well. So here we got two buttons to release the uh, rear seat and through this little frame you can load stuff if you want to. And uh, what else do we got? Nothing, I guess. So, I can take my measuring tape real quick and tell you that you have to lift up the stuff 75 centimeters or 29.5 inches. And we have uh, with here at the largest point of 103 centimeters, so 40.5 inches. It's pretty useless <laughs> because that's really the widest space you find, but you cannot push something in. However, you know, and we got a height here of this little frame of 35 centimeters maybe, so 13.5 inches. Inside we have a depth, a depth, or whatever you call it, um, in the center, in the middle of, well, 86 centimeters, so 34 inches, and a width between the wheel arches, the inner wheel arches, of uh, 86, whoa, 86 centimeters again, so again 34 inches. I just flipped the um, backrest of the rear bench and here you got this loading frame from the trunk to the front and um, the width of, this, uh, of the tightest place is 50 centimeters, so 19.5 inches. At the regular side, it's 58 centimeters, almost 23 inches. And we have a height of, let me see, uh, 34 centimeters, so 13.25 inches. I just pushed the passenger seat to the very front and um, to load things through here, you even have a length inside the car of two meters, really, two meters, it's amazing, 78.5 inches. You can load up to 480 kilograms or 1,058 pounds inside the C-Class convertible or at least the C300 convertible. But I forgot one thing to show you. If I want to close the roof, I have to do something. So as you see, I put my luggage inside. This is um, just for driving around when the roof is closed. But if you want to open it, you have to pull this slide here and you are not al allowed to load things higher than this level. So if I put my backpack on the, um, on the carry-on luggage, it would not work. And if you look down here, you see it comes with a flexible um, thing here that sh should help you to estimate if everything is okay and checked. All right, did I mention 480 kilograms? Yeah and 1058 pounds as well. So, locked and close, ready for some driving action now. Well, second day of the driving event, I'm finally able to drive. Yesterday I just did my moderations and uh, today I took the turn, Mercedes-Benz suggested, so right now I'm in Slovenia. Um, exciting, isn't it? So, let me see, what am I supposed to do here? Turn right. 
So the streets are rather tight and I rather take it slow, but that's okay. Um, I've driven on the Italian Autobahn uh, or highway for quite a bit. The speed limit is 130. I had everything lowered down, roof down, windows lowered down. And I can say um, even with 130 kilometers per hour, uh, you can easily drive um, topless sort of uh, without having too much wind stress. I really like it. It's a cool convertible. They did a good job. Um, Right now everything is lowered except the right uh, window because I had to put the GoPro somewhere. I'm driving 50 km per hour now and as you can see from my little hair here, it's not too much air at all. Now I will just uh, raise all the other windows except the right one because otherwise the GoPro will just go up. And as you can see still driving uh, now 60 km per hour. It's pretty cool. And now I activate the air cap function. So the spoiler gets out and the windbreaker behind the second seat row. And now the only air I really get is a stream that comes down here, but it hardly touches me. It's enough to still give me this feeling, whoa, I'm driving in a convertible. Uh, but on the other hand, I don't have to worry about everything else too much. Uh, by the way, Mercedes-Benz had problems with the air scarf, at least in Germany, or only in Germany, but they solved the problem. It was a legal problem using air scarf in Germany, and now everything is fine again. I have the seat heating on and the air scarf on, and I really enjoy it. It's not too cold, 16.5 degrees Celsius outside, but still it's quite pleasant to have this little airflow, warm airflow in the rear of my neck and sitting warm in my uh, seat. Okay, but since I would really like to enjoy the feeling driving topless, I will lower all the other windows again now and deactivate the air cap function because the air cap does not really do much if you have lowered all the windows. And uh, I personally, I mean, if I drive, it doesn't matter the spoiler that comes out here, but I personally don't like it just the way it looks. So guys, we got different driving programs. I can switch between individual, sport, sport plus, comfort and eco. Going in comfort now. Um, let's start with the suspension. Uh, I got the Airmatic air suspension in here. Uh, Mercedes-Benz is the only manufacturer I know of at least who is offering an air suspension in uh, this, this segment and it really does the car good. Um, the streets here in Slovenia are fine but you know every once in a while especially in the uh, little villages here it's a little bit rough but the air suspension ignores the roughness or at least let me forget that the streets are not that fine it's really nice once i activate sport or sport plus the suspension gets a little stiffer you don't lose too much comfort but you can you know handle the car a little bit more in a sporty way same with the um, acceleration in sport plus it goes a little bit faster especially for the shifting as well well problem is the speed limit here is um, 90 on the country road so acceleration is really not so much fun because you hardly have to um, switch from second to third gear if you want to take it sporty uh, the steering gets a little bit more direct too once you put it in sport plus but it's fine already in comfort. So let me go in comfort so I can talk a little bit more. So uh, all the C-Class convertibles come with a 9G Tronic, at least as an option. With a C300, it comes by default. Uh, it shifts really seamless. It's a joy, unless you go in Sport Plus and really push the throttle hard, then you feel whenever it shifts and you hear it too because the exit system or something maybe it's artificial but I think it's real um, in Sport Plus the exit system makes a little bit more sound especially when you shift you have this 
bubbling, you know, like brum, boop. Um, but the rest of the time, especially when you cruise, you hardly notice the car shifting, which is really neat. Can't tell you much about the brakes. Um, as far as I use them, they worked fine and have no problem with the weight of the car. But uh, I never had problems with the brakes on a Mercedes, to be honest. Okay, leaving the village. And once again, go in Sport Plus. So, going from Comfort to Sport Plus and pushing the throttle, it shifts down automatically two gears so you get better performance for your acceleration. And once again, 60. Well, that's it. I mean, sometimes I'm really sad they don't allow us to drive those cars in Germany where you can go a little bit faster, but that's fine. I mean, overall, I get my driving impression. We have a um, individual, individual driving program so we can uh, put all the settings to our favorite settings and um, you can see what you can influence so first the engine comes with uh, manu oops, manual comfort eco sport and sport plus setting then we can uh, choose what to do with the uh, suspension we got comfort sport and sport plus the steering has um, what the hell am I doing wrong here? <clears throat> For the steering, we can choose between Comfort and Sport. So in Sport, it's a little bit more direct than in Comfort. And then um, we have settings for the start-stop and the um, air condition. All right, I um, apologize for the camera position. I just had to lower, uh, raise all the windows. Uh, plus the, the other one as well. Uh, what I can tell you, it feels like you're driving in a non-convertible, like in the coupe, like, you know, noise-wise. Now it's really silent. Mercedes-Benz is um, offering two different soft tops. One has m uh, several layers in it. I'm not sure how many, but once you pick, uh, pick the one with um, several layers, then the roof is supposed to be very very quiet and i'm a little bit sad that i cannot go on the autobahn because uh, i would really love to hear how the car behaves driving really fast but on the other hand at least we can go 90 here i'm still in sport plus and as you can hear the sound is really nice once you have everything closed so it's more sporty even with the roof uh, up Besides that, you don't hear anything. I just accelerated up to 90. That's the speed limit here. And uh, there's no way I can overtake this truck. So you gotta believe me. Um, even if you go a little bit faster than 90, you don't hear anything from the wind. And if you go to uh, comfort again, so skipping the sport exit sound, then you hardly hear anything. It's like a really silent drive, nice cruiser, I like it. But as I said, I'm limited, I'm Slovenian, Italy, I would really love to drive in Germany. I apologize. If you want to, the C-Class convertible comes with several assist systems. Uh, so we have the... Um, Distronic Plus, or the Distronic, yeah, Distronic Plus, I guess. Uh, so an adaptive cruise control. We have an active lane keeping assist. Both together are good traffic jam assist. So once you get into a traffic jam, it steers by itself and, you know, closes the holes in front of you. And, um, well, I, told, I showed you already the 360 degree camera. We got the uh, head-up display, which I really like because you don't have to watch at the um, GPS system in the screen anymore because you got everything in the uh, window already, plus the speed limit, plus your current speed. I really enjoy it. You can read it fine and it's good to notice. And you have it on the street. You don't have to look around, which I like. 
Uh, we got the Burmester Premium Sound System in here. I don't know if they're offering two different ones, like in the um, now turn half right and the sedan version. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh. It's a break because I'm too fast. Or maybe I can lower the window now again so you see a little bit more. <laughs> Sorry. You will soon be passing through the small village of Lipica on the Italian-Slovenian border. Yeah. This is a world-famous place of pilgrimage for any horse lover. It is home to the legendary Lipica stud farm, established in 1580, and birthplace of the famous Lipican horses. These horses are now bred here again against the backdrop of a nature park and the restored historic castle. See, they programmed the command online for us to get little details about the surrounding, which I think is pretty nice. Uh, I doubt that I see any horses here. However, I'm not about horses, rather about horsepower. So um, we got the Boomester Premium Sound System. I don't know if they have two different ones. At least I got one. Two speakers up in the door. The uh, bus is down somewhere in the in the foot compartment maybe it's even front bus i'm not sure we got two speakers in, in the rear as well i've it. driven 130 kilometers per hour on the autobahn everything lowered down i could still listen to music and it was still sounding good okay uh what i really like to show you is uh, turning on a street please make a u-turn if possible which works with charm and ease to turn right. there's no car coming so i can stop on the road just to show you i turn the steering wheel once and a tiny bit and that's already on the edge so two times around to go from one side to the other or rather two and a little bit all right guys that's it that's it from a review about the Mercedes-Benz C300 convertible. Um, I'm done, I was judging the same points. First of all, fuel consumption. I only drove 100 kilometers. I got a fuel consumption of 11.6 liters. Mercedes claims a fuel consumption of 7.1. I think, well, I drove a little bit more sporty than I should have, and I use Sport Plus a little bit more than I should have. So I think you can drive this car with less than 10 liters. Uh, driving comfort, superb, really. The air suspension is just phenomenal and uh, the seats are awesome, so it's a really comfortable ride, but you can take it a little bit sporty if you want as well. Um, driving fun, the C300 really is a pleasure. Well, you know, the C400 uh, is of course a little bit more fun and especially the C43 would be my preferred uh, per personal choice if you have the money but the 3300 as a four cylinder is already fine and you got the power that you need to overtake on country roads and so on so driving fun yes yeah, especially the convertible feeling with uh, driving topless without having too much turbulences inside is just awesome usage as a daily driver four grown-ups can travel the ones on the uh, rear seats are not so comfortable but it works and the trunk is limited unless you close the roof and uh, last but not least um, comfort well with the air suspension it's just awesome period that's it so i gotta be short because uh, someone is holding the camera for me uh, if you have any questions please put them below in the comments field if you like my review give me a thumb up and i say i'm mr z i hope you enjoyed the review so long and goodbye